I have an absolutely psychotic interview for you with Christy Nome on Face the Nation where she seemingly doubles down on her puppy hatred while getting called out for some flat out lies that she still refuses to walk back. These actions almost single handedly costing her the race for Trump's VP and it's just obscure that she would admit these things about herself in her own book or allow them to be written about her because of course she's not the one writing it. So let's start with what she had to say about Joe Biden's dog Commander kind of in defense of what she did to her own dog Cricket. You talk multiple times about it. In fact, at the end of the book, you say the very first thing you would do if you got to the White House that was different from Joe Biden is you'd make sure Joe Biden's dog was nowhere on the grounds. Commander, say hello to Cricket. It, are you doing this to try to, to look tough? Do you still think that you have a shot at being a VP? Well, number one, Joe Biden's dog has attacked 24 Secret Service people. So how many people is enough people to be attacked and dangerously hurt before you make a decision on a dog and well, what to do with it? Well, he's not living and at the White that's, House that's a question that Writing that you're going to have someone else's dog meet your dog that you just killed is just insane. Commander has already been removed from the White House for what she's talking about, but I guess for Christy Nome, it's personal. Like, she's got a vendetta for life now. Almost every president has had White House pets. If some don't work out, they get removed. And I will say, yeah, you shouldn't have a dog around Secret Service if it's biting them. But to be clear, there's multiple clips of this dog just being loving to strangers. Brian Tyler Cohen posted one on Twitter of himself. It's not like it's just a dog that has these tendencies that was young and probably just couldn't handle that kind of heightened environment of the White House with Secret Service and everyone moving around all briskly. And if your solution to that is murder it rather than, you know, change up the environment, you might be a sociopath, but who am I to say? And for any of you who are unaware of what she had to say about her own dog or what she did to Cricket, I'll leave it above me if you want to read it quickly. It is truly despicable behavior. I didn't ask somebody else to take take that responsibility for me, that I had to make that decision myself. Because you put it in a part of a chapter called Bad Day to Be a Goat. And then after you shot the dog, you, quote, realized another unpleasant job needed to be done. Walking back up to the yard, I spotted our billy goat. You said he smelled and would chase kids, so you took him to the gravel pit and shot him twice. How, how do you justify that? How was the goat a threat? And I'm asking you this because it seems like you're celebrating the killing of the animal. This is just psychotic and absolutely unexplainable behavior. It's almost like she got such a power trip from what she did to Cricket that she then moved on to the goat and said, you're next. I would watch her because isn't the next step escalating to people. I mean, I've watched Dexter before, okay? I, I'm a little bit experienced in this. Even Donald Trump has to back off her now. Like, sexual assault is one thing on his campaign. You know, he's like, oh, I can handle that. But killing puppies and goats, even he thinks that's messed up. And then to put it in a book, describe it the way that she does, which of course she didn't write it herself again, but to give it the final okay and think like, yeah, this will be fine. How do you not understand that people are going to think you're an absolute sociopath? I'm sure he underestimated me having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this, this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. So I'm glad that this book is being released in a couple of days and that those edits will be in place and that people will, will have the updated version. So you did not meet with Kim Jong-un. That's what you're saying. No, I met with many, many world leaders. Yeah, because I'm sure that world leaders just meet with governors of small states all the time randomly for no reason. Why can't she just say, yeah, I didn't meet with them. It was a mistake. If you did meet with him, why would she reach out to her team and talk to them about revising it, like she said? And if they did revise it, why won't you just admit, yeah, it was a mistake. We, we messed up. Does she think that it's like some sort of a marketing ploy? If she's like, oh, you'll never know. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. It just kind of makes her look crazy and like a liar and I'm not buying her book anyway. It's like she's just a compulsive liar and can't help herself. And she's MAGA. 
Who would have ever thought? If you enjoyed this video, we're Social Society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We are pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we're open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that could interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or even commenting on this video. We even have memberships available as low as $3 if you'd like to support, because the only way we become a society is together.